we've seen plenty of big movers in recent months, the likes of Tesla, Virgin Galactic Holdings, uh, Palladium, commodity price, all have more than doubled as these markets have soared. But is there a correct and easy way of jumping into this strength? Hello, I'm David Jones from Capital.com. Uh, I thought we'd do a video looking at strategy again, you know, considering some of the runaway markets we've seen this year. Tesla uh, stock price is an obvious example. If you look at the chart of Palladium, that's another one that had been going vertical for most of last year as well. So I thought, well, let's do a video um, looking at different ways of trading this. I think when markets are moving like this, you know, we've basically, we've got three options. We can wait for the market to pull back, sit on the sidelines, see if we get something of a retracement then jump on board. The risk is, of course, we miss out on the move. Or we just grit our teeth and jump blindly into the strength and hope it continues. And the third option is, of course, to sit on our hands and do nothing. So I thought we'd look at all these different approaches in this video. First of all, um, we're going to catch up with one of the more recent ballistic moves in the market. Of course, as usual, if you're watching and you haven't subscribed, if you can click on subscribe, support the channel, and we'll continue to push out what is hopefully interesting content like this all the way through 2020. So here's a good example um, of what we're talking about. This is the Tesla share price from, what was it, September 2019, when the shares are trading at $225, $225 a share, and then just started this run um, that pushed as high as, what, $969 by February. So these sort of moves, they can be hard to get onto if you're not in them already. So we'll look at some techniques uh, for getting into these sort of parabolic moves in a second. So that was the Tesla share price. Let's talk about the strategy for jumping on these sort of moves. Risk management is, is clearly still important. You know, it's, it's no good jumping into something that's doubled in the last couple of weeks. You, you jump in and over the next couple of days, it halves and you're sitting on a massive loss. So when we start looking at some of these tactics in a couple of minutes, we are going to look at, at strategies for placing uh, stop losses. And the reason we still need stop losses, even on these parabolic to the moon stocks or markets like Bitcoin and, and the price of Palladium, is that these markets can turn around just as quickly, delivering a loss. And the reality is, although plenty of people won't like this, if we're trading markets that are moving uh, much faster and with greater volatility, we need to give them bigger stop losses. Um, the, the stock Virgin Galactic Holdings is a great example. Uh, in the last few days, on one day, we saw a 30% range for the stock from high to low. So we see plenty of swings during the day. If we're trading using stops rather than just blind hope, we need to have the appropriate wider stop losses. So I'm going to have a look now at some different tactics of trading these different markets and see what may have worked and what may suit your own particular trading style. So I think one way of trading these, if we if we stick with Tesla, um, is just to bite the bullet and jump on board. That that's clearly one way of doing it. But you need to think still, I think, about the risk management side. So if we looked at Tesla at the time of recording, they're trading at, at eight forty four a share. So if you thought they were going to move higher, um, the thing you need to think about is well, where's the stop going to go? And for me, the closest I'd want the stop, I look at where the market had pushed to the previous high before we saw at least a slight correction, the bottom of that correction is where my stop's going to go. So in the example of Tesla, it's $200 away. And $200 is a big stop, but you know, if we're dealing with these markets that go do go parabolic and have incredible volatility day to day, we need to give it a bit more room. So, so just biting the bullet, jumping on board, but looking for a sensible stop place, that's one option. But let's look at some other approaches as well. The other approach is just to look to, to buy into strength. If you see a market, Palladium is a great example. So Palladium last year, if we take this chart out, if we go back to the, the, the summer of 2018, those lows, they were down to about 850. And then we can see the share price almost doubled by March the following year, pushing up to, to 1600. And after that sort of move, you may think, well, well, I've missed it. I've missed the move. But I think the, the approach here, if the market starts a move again is to jump on board on that move so for me one approach would be we know the highs are in at 1600 place an order to buy if those highs got broken if we relate it back to the tesla share price the highs were at 969 so again you might have an order in at 
975, 980, 1000. If the share price starts moving again, then you want to jump on board. So whilst you might have missed a big chunk of the move, it doesn't mean, as in this case here, September 2019, the price of palladium started moving again. If you had an order to buy into the breakout, again, with a sensible uh, stop loss, and, and again, because this is a volatile market, you'd need quite wide stop losses. If the price starts breaking again, then bang, you're in the trade. So looking at it at the moment, bringing it right up to date on palladium, in the last few days, we have seen the price break out, push to twenty-seven fifty, sell off uh, a couple of hundred dollars. But again, so if I if I wasn't in the position now, but wanted to buy into strength, let the market tell me it was strong, I put an order to buy probably at twenty-eight hundred. So if the market pushes high and pushes higher still out to that old high, I'm in the trade. And at the moment, where would I want my stop? Again, I'd probably pick the previous major low. So we're down around about 2150. So again, it's a pretty wide stop. If I'm buying at 2800 with a stop at 2150, it's a nearly what a $700 stop. But it's a market that once it starts moving, moves very quickly. So for me, it's waiting for the market to show you some strength, then jumping on board. Gold's another good example. We've seen some big moves in gold um, over recent weeks because of concerns about the coronavirus and people looking for for a safe haven. In the last gold video, just last week, when we were looking at this, um, we'd seen the price had moved out to a seven-year high. Then it started the week punching out again. Let's, let's just zoom in. So the market ended last week around, what, 16.40 an ounce, and then we had the gap open in Asian trade around about 16.60, pushes up to 16.88, and since then it's been tailing off. But if we go back to that bigger picture view, you can see the trend for gold is most definitely up, you know, going back to these these August 2018 lows. So another approach here, we could, of course, put a stop in to buy into strength. If the market gets to 1700, then get us in. You know, again, I would probably want my stop down here somewhere. The other side of those February lows, it's $150 away if we're buying at, at 1700. But a different approach could be, let's just zoom into what's been happening more recently. So we know the market is strong, but over the last, um, what is it, 24 hours or so, it's been, it's been sliding. We want to wait for this slide to be over. So at the moment, we're, we're still correcting. It's filled that gap from Asian trade. If we go back to the dailies, I think the disciplined approach here is to at least wait for one day where gold stops going back. You know, if we pick up on, on this example here, this is the sort of thing I'm looking for that we saw at the beginning of February where the price is sliding, sliding. We have these two down days, two red candles. Uh, then we have a day that stabilizes and a day where the market moves higher. So for me, this would be the sort of setup I'd be looking for now on gold. And maybe it'll slide for the next few days. Um, but that trend is still up. So if the, if it stops sliding, we see the recovery come back in. The most aggressive place I'd want my stop again, going back to this example here is underneath the most recent low after it stops correcting. Uh, but again, a wider stop. If I was buying up here, we'd be back um, at these lows. So I think there are lots of different ways. You can either just grit your teeth, jump on board the momentum and hope it keeps going, which is one approach. It would have worked with the likes of Tesla, for example. The other approach is if the market's peaked, we set an order to buy in if it starts moving again, if it breaks through that previous peak. Or as with this gold example, we've seen the market clearly correcting over the last 24 hours. That trend is still strong. We wait for that correction to run out of steam, wait for perhaps, if we're looking at daily charts, at least a day when it stops going down. If we're looking at, at hourly charts, at least an hour, two hours where the weakness stops and then look to buy in and have a sensible place for, the, for a stop. So there are lots of different ways. There's no perfect solution here and we still need to think about uh, risk management. But I think these approaches you know, give us an opportunity to jump on board a strong moving market and still have a sensible approach to risk management. That's it. Um, hopefully there's something in there that fits with your particular approach to markets. But for this, this quick update on looking at a strategy, we'll leave things there. So from me, David Jones and Capital.com, good luck with your trading. Yeah.